Hello, my name is Ray Salazar, and this is Morning Real, a three to four to a hundred minute or so podcast of films that I review from all nations under God, indivisible, to liberty and justice for all, and all other nations. Today, I review The Silence of the Lambs. Man, this movie's fucking crazy, man. It's a very dated film. I mean, it came out in... in February 14th, Valentine's Day. Imagine like taking your girl out or your partner or whatnot to go see Silence of the Lambs. Dude. And this movie's crazy. Like this is not really a date movie, but you could make it a date movie because, you know, it's it's relevant to how, how we should treat one another, right? Because there are crazy people out there. And maybe you can prevent the craziness by, you know, not telling people that they suck or whatever, you know, or... Maybe support them. But anyways, Jonathan Dam directed this film. I'm not too big on this guy, man. But I've seen a couple of other I've seen a couple of other films that he's made, such as Rachel Getting Married, which is pretty cool. And when I was watching this film and then thinking about Rachel Getting Married, I noticed a, a, a certain style that this guy has. You know, it's very he likes to take a scene. And really shoot it for a long time before going to a cut. He does that a lot in Rachel Getting Married. And you can see that type of um, style in this film too. What really got me to this film cinematography wise. Is the close up man. Like this film was a, is a. Like honestly if you're a cinematographer out there. Or whatnot, or a photographer. This film is a master class of the close up. At least 80% of the film is a close up. Or the shot ends up being a close-up. And I like the use of the zoom lens. Where the shot will begin in, begin in the wide. And somehow it will carefully zoom its way to the shot that you want from the characters that are commanding the scene. A lot of really good performances from this film. And I'm going to go through this really quickly. Screenplay by Ted Talley. Based on The Silence of the Lands by Thomas Harris. Produced by Kenneth Utt, Edward Saxon, Ron Bosman. Starring Jodie Foster, Anthony Hopkins, Scott Glenn, and Ted Levine. Cinematography by Tak Fujimoto. Oh, edited by Craig McKay. Music by Howard Shore. Distributed by Orion Pictures. Damn, that company is not around anymore. They got scooped up. Now, I don't know too much about Red Dragon or Hannibal Rising or the film that became before this film i just saw this film for what it is and it's about a serial killer who's helping a fbi agent finding another serial killer that he knows about and is well aware of the fact that this guy is killing people and it's funny how like you don't really necessarily have to really know a person to know what they're up to but just by like looking at the news of some kind you get a you get a sense of like, oh crap, like, I think I know who this is. I know who's killing these people. I've treated these people as crazy as I am. And Hannibal Lecter's crazy, but he's smart as hell. He's definitely a person you don't want to want to mess with because he's a cannibal. He will gladly bite your nose off and with a smile on his face and all that crap. And we don't really get to see some of that stuff. And it's funny, like, the choice of gore violence and blood in this film is very minimal especially for a thriller film like this but it is just enough for you to it's not over the top and there's a lot of films especially like horror films that like to go over the top with the blood and the violence and the gore all fucking orgied up together but this one does it really modestly does it right it doesn't make you want to turn your face back from the screen because then what's the point of watching it if you can't even watch it, right? So Jonathan Dem, he 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 really knows how to keep the audience engaged. And and this film's not really all about blood and violence. It's really cerebral. It tries to tell you what kind of motives people have, you know, out of things that they couldn't figure out when they were kids or when they were growing up. You know, it's kind of sad. You know, there's bunch of sick people out there and i mean that in the you know in the sense that these people actually do need help you know their mental health identity issues like 
you don't know when you have like a little serial killer in in the midst, you know, like you just don't know. And now this film is from an adapted book. So in no way whatsoever is it real. I'm pretty sure maybe somehow it's based on true events. But Jodie Foster playing this role of Clary starring or starling whatever. Pretty good role. Like she's somebody who really cares about humanity, you know, and that's kind of like the whole point about like solving murders, right? Like not only you're solving a crime, but like you're trying to put justice afoot. You're trying to put the normalcy back in society. And when you got people like Buffalo Bill running amok, slicing fat bitches and like making a dress out of their skin. Now that's just crazy, man. Like there's no gore or blood about it. But when Clary sees that room with that human dress, dude, with the tits, man, that's crazy, dude. Like imagine being there. Like, let's just like dive into the mind of Clarice. She's scared. She knows she's in the house with Buffalo Bill. She's looking for him. She don't know where she is. Buffalo Bill knows where he is to the point where he shuts off the lights. And clearly, which is so good, so good acting of Jodie Foster, where you're pretending to be in complete darkness. Now, I, I wondered, like, like there's no way it's so dark in there. Like, I, I know they use the night, the night vision in the scene, but obviously, you know, you put a green filter on there and you see the shadow, of course. Once you see the shadow... You know, the realism has left the building. But the way she is, like, getting through the house with trying to, like, touch her way into stuff. And you got Buffalo Bill, like, just right behind her trying to touch her, dude. And this it's just crazy, man. That guy is crazy. And the payoff is pretty good. Like, it's a pretty good film. It's long. It's long enough for you to be entertained. When you see Buffalo Bill get shot up, it's satisfying as fuck because that guy would keep women inside this pit that's impossible for you to escape. And you see that with all the blood markings on the on the wall around the people who would get stuck in that pit. It's a sick world we live in, man, with sick people in it. But that's why we got people like Clarice trying to figure shit out, right? Now, I urge you to see this film, Valentine's Day or not. It's a good thriller, good Jonathan Dem film. I'm going to probably see more of his work. I might see it again just because of just how much of a good job he does with that close-up, man. That close-up is pretty cool. And you know what's funny? I've always like want, wanted to see a film that had that type of like exercise to achieve, the notion that, you know what, I'm going to shoot a film where everything's 85 to 100 millimeters like for two hours straight that's it's not not only is it ambitious but it it just like takes off the the box it, it takes it, it it unwraps the box of creativity it's like man there's no limitations to this shit you find ways and it'll look good at the same time my name is ray salazar follow me on morning shot films ig and youtube check out my podcast the morning reel where you get you can hear this everywhere, including YouTube, except Spotify, website, morningshotfilms.co. Thank you.